Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some router work on this 12 millimeter plywood. I've used plywood before and it routes out really nice. I don't, it's, don't have any issues with it at all. And the idea we're going to route out all the white sections. Just leaving the black lines here as you'll see. Once they're all routed out, we will fill all these in with the appropriate resin of the colour required. So there will be some whites in there, nice blue sky. There's a little boat here, you might just be able to make out the boat. And these are tied to a boy there, and then we do the blues for different blues for the water. And hopefully when it's all nicely complete, it will stand out a lot better than it is now. It measures 12 inches by 7.5 inches across. We've printed it out on standard pr printer paper, inkjet printer for me. And I like to use carbon paper or graphite paper underneath and literally just draw around it. I prefer to use a biro or a pen and just draw around it all like so. And that will transfer your image onto your wood. Remember, securing it wisely with the painter's tape. So once you've gone around it all, we can simply remove that. And there's our nice pattern for today. That's come out really nice and clear. Definitely helps when you have nice fresh carbon paper. Not something like this one. This one's probably appeared on all mine. That's dry and that's no good to anybody, but you want fresh carbon paper to sort it out. So there's our image. So remember, if you want to take your time, colour in all the sections you want to remove, just to make sure you don't come out, go away, come back again and start removing those inner lines. Because that will be basically the end of your project. So we've got enough enough to root out, should we say. And hopefully that will leave those little barriers there. We'll put some stain on towards the end. And then basically just fill them all in with nice coloured resin. As always to me, CMC bits for my lines. These come in different degrees. 10s, 15, 20s. And they're basically nice pins like that. If I just get that to focus. There we go. And just get that in there. This is a 15, I believe. 15 degree. That's just the angle of that cut on the end they do have a small shaft on them a 3.175 millimeter so to fit a quarter inch router you will need what they call an adapter reducer collet and it's just a basically a tube like that with a couple of splits in and you slot your cnc bit into the end like so that will now fit your quarter inch router or 6.35 millimeter if your router is half an inch you're obviously going to need a bigger adapter so we will pop that in the router and I do all my lines. So we're going to remove all this section. So we'll go up to the line and up to the line on that side, up to the line and up to the line. You might be tempted to route out straight on the line, but if you've got smaller sections like here, once you've got routed out there on the line and routed out there on the line, because of the depth that you're going, you're going to make this even thinner than what it is now. So always up to the line. On everything, once you've done all that, We'll pop on a end milling bits. Now remember, there is different bits out there. There's spiral up cut bits, there's liner bits, profile bits. Find one that suits you. But for me, good old eBay or Amazon. CNC bits for the lines. End milling bits for the router now. And you can get one at a nice size. And they fit the same adapter. They have the same shaft on. It's 3.175 millimeter. So we'll just slot that into there. Set it to the same depth. And we will use this to clear out all this section in between. You'll see as we go along. So we'll pop that in the router. I work on three millimetres. I made myself a little gauge like that. And that is basically the same thickness, shall we call it, as one of your CNC bits. And that is plenty deep enough for us to route out and put our resin in with no issues. So we'll start routing this one out. And then when we come back, we'll pop a bit of stain on maybe, just to darken it down. Spray a bit of varnish on. I'll explain that towards the end of the video. And then we'll mix our resin up and basically just start filling it in. And then we'll add a hook on at the end just to finish it. Okay, we'll pop our little CNC bit in the router. Nice new one today. We'll set it to three millimetres, remember. And we can start routing this one out.
Right, so we've gone all the way round with that CNC bit. And you can more or less just see from there, look, we can just about make out the pencil line. Remember, we just routed out up to the line. Look, just get my nail inside there. And it's not perfect. There's little sections up here, look. We could have probably just got that a little bit tighter. But we will nibble at that with our end milling bit once we put that on. And remember, we're going to go around with some nice bit of sandpaper or an engraving bit just to tidy it all up towards the end. So don't be overly concerned if it's not perfect on the line. When you do these straight lines here, you'll notice with the router, because you are coming to the end of the piece, just get this cable here, excuse me, your balance just might not be right. So if you just get yourself a piece of wood of the same size, hopefully this piece will fit. And you can put that alongside like so. And that will just give you a better surface for your router to route on. You can come down like that. And it just gives you a bit more security, should we say. But for me personally, I just skim over. I'm not overly concerned if it's not a perfect straight line. But we're going to get some kind of little framework there towards the end. So that's it for our CNC bit. So it's just a simple case of removing it from the adapter. You'll get a lot more projects out of that. And we're going to pop on one of these end milling bits. I've already picked out the little blue one there. I managed to get these with the barriers on. I think they come without the barrier now, but they are exactly the same piece. And we literally just slot it into there. We'll pop that into our router again. We'll set it to the same depth. You notice as you go along, I like to remove certain sections. We took a piece out of there and down the middle of the boat. And we can simply just set it to that depth. Once the bit's in the router, obviously. And we're just going to remove out all those penciled out areas again. So we're going to take all this out now. So it's a slow, slow process. I have found this plywood comes out really nice. So it shouldn't be overly long. There is bigger pieces. I've got some really chunky pieces. But if you put in a too big a piece, obviously you're not going to fit into these small areas. Plus, they are a bit more aggressive. So when you come to more delicate sections, like the corner of this one, if you were to come in there, you could catch that and you're going to break that corner off. So sometimes it just pays you. Just use smaller set pieces and take your time. Okay, let's set this one up. We'll set it to that depth in there. And we'll start removing all the penciled out areas. Right, so we've made it all the way around with that little end milling bit there. I actually put a different one on, slightly bigger. I think that other one was again a little bit worn. The good thing about these, they will clear out the back section, section, should I say, as well as the side section. So it is a fairly smooth finish on there. I don't know if you can just about make out. We've not touched that with anything yet. We will go over the top with some sandpaper, maybe a little mouse sander sander the only thing you've got to be careful with with plywood is over sanding i've done a little sample on this corner if you can see that 
If you play about too much of your sander, you're going to get that top veneer off to the yellow section. And if you keep going, you'll come to the wood, wood underneath. So if you're going to paint all this, just be aware you're not going to get a lot of sanding on top before you start making a mess of your surface. But a quick skim over, so you not give it too much problem. So we'll just do that quickly now, just so we've cleared off the remainder of those pencil lines, as you can see. Normally, I would go in with a Dremel with a little engraving bit on the end and you could use that if you just wanted to go in and tidy it all up but I think because we are filling this in with resin we're nearly going to be to the top of this so there won't be a lot to see so we don't want to waste too much time cleaning all that back section now because we are basically going to cover it all with resin so for now I'll just give it a quick skim over with a mouse sander and we'll use a bit of standard sandpaper there just to take that edge off we can just go in like so and give it all a nice little tidy up and sort those lines out. Quick tidy up first, then when we come back, we'll be ready to put some stain on and look forward towards the resin side of things. Okay, that's all nicely cleared up. All the pencil lines are gone. So we've got a nice little pattern there, a little project to start filling in now. Just before that, I'm going to put some dark teak wood dye on this. Basically what I've used on most of my projects. And I think there's just enough there to finish this off. We want it fairly dark. You could spray this all black if you wanted to. Remember, we are going for a lead window effect. So we've got to imagine these lines all being lead. So you want it fairly dark. Now, the best way for me is if you just to pop it on with a brush. Don't mess about. Just, just paint the full piece. On previous projects, I have just done the main bits like there. Remember, we want those side walls done. Because when we pop our resin in, we're not going to fill it to the top. So we don't want any whiter wood showing on the side section, if that makes sense. So we've got to do it all. What I used to do was basically just cover those sections like that. And then when I put my resin in, because it wasn't coloured deep enough, should we say, the colour-wise, you could see the stain underneath. So I'm now I just basically just do the full piece. Just throw this on, all those side bits. And don't, not forgetting your side walls as well. And that way, once the resin goes on top, you've got a nice, dark, deep colour underneath. And you won't have any of these lighter sections showing okay we get the general idea from that i'll just continue cover this all up just with the dark tea wood dye there then when we come back and it's nicely dried we'll be on to the next stage which will be just a pop a bit of varnish on i'll tell you about that near the time right we left that for a good day there was no need for it it dries fairly quick and you can see it's not as dark as it was before. So don't panic when you first put it on. It looks fairly dark. We've got all the main frame done and these line sections across there. Remember, that's all we're going to see. We've got no issues with this not looking so clever. Remember, we're going to cover all this up with resin. And we've done the side bits and the back bit as well there. So personal choice. I do like a bit of spray varnish to finish my projects off. Just to give them a nice little shine. Plus also we're going to seal this plywood with the spray varnish just to stop any bubbles appearing or whatever we have and it's soaking in and maybe bleeding into the side woods. Personally it doesn't really happen a lot but for me I just do like a bit of spray varnish on just to finish it off. And we grab whatever we can, 151 clear varnish. I think we've got a yacht varnish over here. So whatever's a good price on the day. So I'll just give this three or four coats. Like I say, more or less just to give it a nice shiny finish and it will also darken it down. So let's just go over like that. And I'll let that one dry. You can see how dark it's getting nicely. Once it's dried, don't take too long. I'll go outside with a bit more ventilation and you can see from that, it's just going to do a better finish on those areas that we're going to see. Not forgetting, pop a bit on the side bits if needed. 
Right, we'll come back in five minutes or so. When it's all nicely done, and we'll go indoors where it's a little bit warmer, and we'll start filling this one in with resin. Right, that's enough varnish for me. Just enough to say, give it a nice shine all the way around. You could lay it up a bit more, two or three more coats if wanted, but that's plenty. When we compare the back, which has had nothing on, to the front, we can certainly see the difference here. So that's enough for me now. So hopefully we've also sealed this as well as give it a nice shiny finish. Now resin time. So we're literally going to fill this up with resin nearly to the top. We still want to be able to feel out the routed out area, so we don't want to overfill it, obviously. And it's going to be Vista 1 resin today. Just keep an eye on your resin. Some are one-to-one, -one, so one part A to exactly the same as one part B, if I just find it over there. So whatever you're putting in that, and remember it's some resins are by volume, some are by weights. This is by volume. What I tend to use are these little plastic party cup speakers. They're ideal because they've got little grooves on the side. So I count up, let's say five of those today. I rather mix small amounts as mixing a large cup full and have it curing or set it on you by the time you've messed about with your colours. So we have A for the resin. So we've gone up five, let's say. And exactly the same for the Adner. So we've gone up five with that. So we pour some of that into there, pour some of that into there, and basically just mix the two together. They do say transfer both into a third cup. It's not something I've ever done, and I honestly can say I've never had any issues. Personally, you're just wasting another cup. I will mix that off site, or off camera, should I say, off site. Colour wise, just a cheap Crawford and black acrylic paint. We'll drop a bit in once we've mixed it and just basically just start filling this in. As we fill it in, we'll get our little oversized cocktail stick. That just helps you to feed it along the way. And once you've done each section, you'll just skim over with a lighter like so. And that just helps all those little air bubbles come to the top. Once it's all nicely filled in, we'll cover it over, put it to one side for an hour or so. And hopefully this little project will be finished. And for mixing wise, while I'm here, same again, just cheap, cheap plastic party knife forks or spoons. These are a little bit too big to be honest, but it's all I could find. Though ideal because they do have a nice little groovy in the back there. So once you've mixed all your resin up, you can just scoop that out nicely and feed it in to these smaller areas. Okay, so we'll mix a small batch up. We'll pop some colours in, transfer one to another side. Start filling it in and hopefully it'll take shape as we go along. Once we've started, I'll obviously speed things up a bit because it's a little bit of a slow process. Okay, let's start filling this one in. Okay, there's our resin nicely mixed. Follow your instructions. Please have some nice gloves on. Don't follow my example. And you want a proper mask on and you want plenty of ventilation. This resin stuff can be quite nasty if you have a reaction to breathing it in or getting it on your skin. Personally myself, I've never used gloves in five years and I would say my hands are quite uh, fine, as we could say, but please, please follow your instructions. Do not listen to my advice as regards to the health and safety side of things. Right, so we've mixed our first little batch up. Pick out your colours. We're going to go for white first, just because it's get the, some of the clouds done. I'm just, literally just going to transfer some over. Like so. This is pure guesswork. Remember, we've got a little bit left over in there. That will do for another colour. Put that to one side. We should have enough in there. Surprising how far it goes. And see, so we have some left over. I have a little project thing I use. Just quickly. I basically have a little silicon mould like that. And I just fill that in with what's ever left over. And that will give me some nice little resin cubes to use on a different projects so we don't waste anything here so there's our resin mix just with the acrylics now they do say 10% of any color or additive be honest I just put in what I feel I need and I've never had any issues I just squeeze in a little dollop like so get more there get a nice good I prefer nice strong colors obviously if you're doing a stained glass effect you wouldn't put so much in and it will be more transparent. 
So mix, mix, mix. I will try and speed things up a little bit because it's basically the same thing. And hopefully we can start filling this one in. I tend to put a little bit into a project like so. Remember we've got our little scoop at the end of the spoon there. And we can drop a little bit in there. If that looks white enough, then we know we're good to go. It will spread slowly, but get your little cocktail stick and literally just help it on its way, like so. And we draw these the same. You can put little markers on, we know we want some in there. Bit in there, 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 and there. That way, we're not going to go fill in something that we don't need. Okay, so we're happy with that one. We just do exactly the same to all these pieces. Basically go around, fill them all in, let them find their own levels. We get the idea from that, don't we? Okay, so I'll continue, speed things up. Remember, as we do each section, we can just skim across with a lighter and that will help any little bubbles that are in there. Okay, let's speed things up and we'll fill this one in. Right, that's all nicely filled in now. We just about got away with it. One of those colours was a little bit too thick, but we managed to lay it down. If anything, it's given it a bit of a ripple effect on the water. So you can see from that, everything's nicely filled in. And after we put each cover, uh, each colour in, should I say, remember, we go across our lighter, and that just helps any of those air bubbles come to the top hopefully disappear and i'll come back in five minutes time and just give it a nicely little skim over again right so we'll just put this to one side for 24 hours get a nice cover for it you want to cover it with something like so because the dust flies or anything they will find it that's for sure so we'll pop it to one side and then come back in 24 hours Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now it's less than 24 hours later. This is all nicely cured, set solid. Personally, I'll leave it for another two or three days. On some resin groups, they reckon 30 days to fully cure. Personally, myself, I think that's a little bit over the top, but just read your instructions on the type of resin that you're using. And you can see for that, we've had no issues. I'll just get the lighting right for you. And you can see all the way there, and it's all nicely solid. That would be about 15 hours later. But I'll certainly leave it, like I say, a little bit longer. We've popped a little look on the back there for hanging purposes. You could make a nice frame for that. You could uh, cut this out on a scroll saw, to be honest. It's actually a scroll saw pattern. It would basically cut out all the sections and then stick this top layer to the backer and fill it in with resin, just the same. So if routing is not your thing, you can always use a scroll saw. And you can see from that, I'm just going to get that light in there to give you the effect of the water reflecting, the sun reflecting on the water. Okay, I'm getting a bit carried away here, aren't I? But you can more or less see from that, everything's fine. I'm just trying to give you better ang angles. If anything, I'm going to be a little bit picky. The green there should add a little bit more in there, a little bit more in there. But like I say, we're just being picky, picky. So that's it. This little project is finished. So it's routed out on 12 millimeter plywood. Now I find plywood's really good. Better for resin projects, because obviously painting wise, you're not get, gonna get such a nice surface at the back there. So morely for resin, but it does route out really nice. We use our little CNC bits here. 
3.175 millimeter shaft on them so remember your little adapter collet for the lines and we use our little engraving bits here to click for the clear out and it came out really nice no problem bit of dark stain there dark teak stain just to darken that plywood down i've got a little bit of left with that so that will make an appearance in another project and just while I'm, I'm on i can just show you this was the leftovers from the resin so it didn't really waste a lot from what you can see and i've just got one of these little silicone molds i will be using these in future projects and they pop out really nice and i've got a jug full of these and hopefully we're going to do something and try and incorporate them with the project but you can see from there they pop out really nice no problem whatsoever so that will be used on a future piece but for now this one is finished and it measures in at 12 inches by seven and a half routed out on 12 millimeter plywood we then use resin vista one resin mixed with acrylic paint to inlay it all with and that's it this little project is finished Thank you very much for watching.